Perhaps the most important thing to know about crime is that it doesn't happen at random. Crime is heavily concentrated in several different ways. We know that a small number of offenders are responsible for a big chunk of all crime. We know that unfortunately a small number of people are at higher risk of being victims of crime over and over again. And we also know that crime is heavily concentrated in a small number of places. So the reason we put crime on maps is to help us understand where different types of crime happen most often. Take this map of homicides in the city of Medellin in Colombia. We can see straight away that homicides aren't evenly distributed throughout the city. A big proportion of all homicides happen in a small number of places. There are more homicides in the city centre and very few in some outlying districts. If we wanted to set up a project to prevent homicides in Medellin, or we wanted to know where it would be best to build a new trauma hospital, the information on this map could be very useful. Researchers have done lots of work to find out exactly how concentrated crime is in particular places. Generally, this has found that about half of crime happens on about 5% of streets, with violent crimes tending to be slightly more concentrated than property crimes. That also means that most places experience either very little crime or no crime at all. This rule, that most crime happens in a small minority of places, is known as the law of crime concentration. The early research on this topic was mostly done in the United States, with researchers finding that half of crime in Seattle happened on 5% of streets, while half of crime in Cincinnati happened on 6% of streets. More recent research has found similar results for other countries. For example, half of violence in Oslo in Norway happens in 6% of small areas, while in Kaduna in Nigeria, half of burglaries happen at about 8% of addresses. In fact, this heavy concentration of crime in a small number of places has been found for every type of crime in every country that researchers have studied. It's important to note, when we're talking about crime concentration, that crime is primarily concentrated at small places such as individual addresses or streets. Even in an area that might be described as a high crime neighbourhood, we will typically find that most crime happens at a few addresses or on a few streets, with the rest of the neighbourhood having quite low levels of crime. That's why in this course we'll primarily be looking at concentrations of crime at micro places, such as addresses and streets, rather than analysing crime at a neighbourhood level. All this means that if we want to understand crime, or to try to stop it, then it's really important to know where crime happens. And that's why it's useful to put crime on maps. So to summarise, crime doesn't happen at random, it's concentrated in several different ways. Most crime happens in a small number of high crime places, while most places have no crime at all. The law of crime concentration applies to different types of crime in many different countries.